And welcome back to Public Affairs on Peach this morning. We are uh, putting the spotlight on National Women's Health Week, which is recognized every year the week following Mother's Day. And this morning we are joined by Dr. MJ Collier, a family practitioner here in Lithia Springs, also the Chief Medical Officer at Southside Medical Center. Doctor, good morning to you. Good morning, Brian. Uh, you, in your practice every day, you're seeing women. Are you seeing women and this need for medical care and why the need for, for a week dedicated to it? Well, we need more than a week. We need a month or we need year round addressing the health care needs of our female patients because oftentimes the woman in the house is the she's the chief medical officer of her home's health care. Mm -hmm. And when there's a medical crisis, she takes care of the spouse and the children. But when she has a health care need, it's oftentimes pushed to the side because she has to keep going. Right. And what we're seeing now is a, a large percentage of patients that are being challenged by health care concerns like high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, all of those things that are not routinely looked for when a woman goes to the doctor for a health check. Women will go for waist down physical exams, pap mm -hmm. smears, and they'll do that annually and routinely. They're reminded about that from the health care provider. They receive calls, come get your pap smear, it's time for your mammogram. But they rarely get waist up exams, including chest x-rays and EKGs and evaluations for cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer of women. Why do you think, uh, other than you know, taking care of the family, why else would a woman not go and do those things? Well, uh, again, women are introduced into the healthcare system usually very early in life mm -hmm. at the onset of their menstrual cycles because of the issue of pregnancy, uh, either trying to or trying not to get pregnant. So they learn quickly, and their OBGYN physician will usually become their primary care provider, and they receive those services routinely. But to have a, a primary care physician, a family medicine for doctor or an internist is not the usual part of a woman's health care, and that's how they oftentimes just get put into a different channel in the healthcare system. Are you seeing out there, I mean, I know we have the Affordable, uh, the Affordable Care Act and things such kind of going into place here. Are you seeing, and, and I don't know, so I'm asking your advice here, mm -hmm. you know, do, are, are women not going to the doctors because they're not insured? Or there just isn't the, you know, affordability for those who may not be insured right now to go get access to that kind of basic health screenings? Uh, that is one of the challenges, affordability of health care. But oftentimes the women will have insurance. They'll have it they either still through their come. job. They just, it's just not a part of the culture. So we're trying to reorientate the patient, the women, as well as the providers to not just, uh, you know, check for the routine things they normally do, but they need to evaluate them for all disease processes. Women, time, women are oftentimes undiagnosed or inappropriately diagnosed when they go to the emergency room with chest pain. They're told they're having panic attacks, anxiety, uh, acid reflux, heartburn, but not a heart attack. And what happens to these women? They go home and die because they've had a heart attack, but the, the diagnosis wasn't even considered. And so we're having to reorientate the providers as well as the patients, the signs and symptoms of cardiovascular disease. And how do you, how do you convince a woman who's come in and, and maybe there are some things that even women can do as doctors may be telling them, hey, these are things you can do at home, right? To, to check on your own basic health care, and these are some of the warning signs. Uh, again, for chest pain, uh, you take an aspirin first line unless you have an allergy to aspirin uh, while you're trying to evaluate the chest pain. If it persists, if it has additional symptoms such as pain that's referred to the jaw or the left arm, if it's affiliated with nausea, vomiting, and sweating, or we call that diaphoresis, then you need to consider the possibility. But if you don't, you have to be concerned about it. Oftentimes, people, men and women, they'll have those types of symptoms and say, well, I just go to bed and see what happens, and they don't wake up the next morning. So you have to be prepared to take action when you have that window of opportunity to do just that. As far as routine health care is concerned, the usual things, uh, get a good night's sleep, eat healthy. The woman is usually the person in the house that's responsible for the health of the house, including the nutrition. They purchase the groceries, they prepare the food, so if it's going to be a healthy eating environment, we have to make sure that she's doing just that. But we also have to make sure the healthy foods are available in a reasonable location. And oftentimes in our low economic status neighborhoods, there are no grocery stores. Is there one thing in particular, uh, doctor, is there one thing in particular that women don't often check within themselves uh, that it may be too late by the time they go to the doctor? Maybe something that there really are no warning signs that you'd only see in a routine checkup. Well, high blood pressure, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, the big three that affects everybody, the condition affectionately referred to as the metabolic syndrome. Uh, oftentimes when a woman's waist size starts to grow and she obtains what's called a pear shape, she's at risk. If her waist size exceeds 35 inches, at the umbilicus or the belly button, then she's at risk for the condition called metabolic syndrome. And that's usually, it has no substantive 
or substantive signs or symptoms until you have a major event, a heart attack or a stroke. So we have to make sure that the person is sensitized. Routine screenings are the answer. You should go to the doctor for a comprehensive physical exam once a year, a midterm checkup every six months uh, in the interim. And when you do, make sure that the doctor is actually evaluating you and not just doing a quick visit on you. All right, you very in. good. We have about a minute left. If there is any advice that you could give any mom who's, who's watching the, the program right now, what would that advice be? Well, oftentimes when you have a health crisis in the family, right now we have what we're calling the sandwich generation. Uh, adult women are taking care of their parents as well as their children. So a parent has a, a health crisis, a heart attack or stroke. The oldest female in the family usually a, re, takes the responsibility of taking care of them. And after that crisis ends one way or the other, then they have a major health crisis within three to six months, usually a major event like a heart attack or a stroke. So when you're taking care of others, you just have to remember to take care of yourselves. And the men in their lives need to insist that they get themselves checked. All right, Dr. Collier, thanks for your time this morning. Some Thank great you. advice for women out there. We appreciate okay. it. Stay with us here. When we come back, how one organization is helping uninsured and underinsured women getting the proper health checkups that they need. Stay with us.